So thank you all so much for coming today uh, to our webinar on Bat Week. Very excited uh, that so many people are interested in Bat Week. Um, I've learned so much about bats since working working on this project, um, and I'm oh, why is this paused? I'm really happy that uh, folks are um, here and and interested. And ooh, can you guys see my screen? Is this working? <laughs> Hold on, I don't think it's actually doing the right screen share. Let's try this again. Okay, let me know if you can see the PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, Amy says that, that she can't, great. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so in case you don't know me, my name is Amelia. Uh, I am the lifelong learning librarian at the Montana State Library. Um, and uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And um, I am a little congested because I'm getting over COVID and I might have some coughing. So apologies for that in advance. Um, but uh, thank you everyone for being here. So our agenda for today um, is we're gonna talk about what is Bat Week? Uh, and then we're gonna talk about some of the resources that will be available to you all um, to use for Bat Week. I will let folks know who are out of town, some of this uh, out of Montana. Um, some of the resources here are Montana specific and are for Montana libraries, but there are a couple of things here that anyone will be able to use and, and you're welcome to use. So. I'll try and let you know. Um, I wish that I could share all of the resources with all of you, um, but I appreciate you all being here anyway. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about Bat Week packages, we're gonna talk about Bat Trunks, and then also about Bat Week resources, and then also see if you guys have any questions. Um, I see that some of you are using the chat already, which is great. Uh, I will be monitoring that. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to stick them in there. I'll bring them to everyone's attention. Um, and you're also welcome to unmute yourself if you like to. We have a pretty small group, so um, you can just unmute and interrupt if you like to. Uh, a, a few things before we get started into Bat Week stuff. I just wanted to have this slide as a reminder of how to stay connected to the Montana State Library. Um, so folks who might not know, you're welcome to always check out our website. Um, I'm gonna stick that link in the chat box. Um, and that's where you'll find lots of great information about all of our programs and all of our services and resources. Um, my area is lifelong learning. Um, so you can find that from the drop down menu and, and learn more there. Um, we also have the Montana Library Network newsletter that's sent out on the first and third Tuesdays of each month. Um, and so you can subscribe to receive that directly <laughs> um, or it's all, a copy of it is also sent out on Wired. Um, and the Wired listserv is also linked on here. Um, it's just the Montana Library listserv. I'm sorry, my cat is getting into trouble. Um, and uh, so anyone is welcome to join that. And that's really great for sort of time sensitive emails and, and news um, and just kind of staying in touch with the Montana community. Um, we have our Aspen events calendar, um, and that's just uh, aspen.mt.gov, um, and that has all of our upcoming trainings and um, events and um, information there. Uh, you can find all of the Zoom links. If you're a Montana librarian, you can register for MSL credit. Um, and then, of course, you can always reach out to any state library staff member um, at any point in time with questions or comments. You can call us, email us uh, if you want to reach us. Um, oh, also our MSL help desk. Uh, if you haven't visited that, um, I will drop the link in there later on um, into the chat box. But that is a really great starting point. If you have questions, I would say start at the help desk, especially if you have questions about Aspen, about CE, about... Um, Montana Shared Catalog stuff. The help desk has lots of great knowledge-based articles um, and how-tos and tutorials. So that is a great place to start. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, if you'd like more information, if you'd like a bit more of an introduction to these things, please let me know. Um, it's really important to stay connected uh, so that you don't miss out on opportunities and trainings and things that are happening. And I'm always happy to talk about all of these different things. 
Okay, so now we'll get to talk about Bat Week. And um, so what is Bat Week? On this slide, there's a picture of um, the silhouettes of bats uh, flying at uh, sunset, very atmospheric. Um, <laughs> and so Bat Week is an international annual celebration designed to raise awareness about the need for bat conservation. Um, there's a lot of um, misunderstanding or just misconception about bats. People think they're scary. Um, people think about rabies, which I mean is an important health concern, but um, there's so much more that bats do and they're actually a, a vital and important part of the ecosystem. Um, and it's they, they, they need some PR help and some public awareness and education. And that's something that libraries and other educational organizations can really help with. And I think you'll find that once you do let people know about bats and the things that they do, people think, wow, that, that's actually really cool. And that's really fun to learn. Um, and people get really enthusiastic about it. Um, I don't know when Bat Week started. Um, the, the main website for Bat Week is just batweek.org. Um, and that's the that was the kind of originator of a lot of these resources and ideas. Um, <laughs> but there's a ton of bat enthusiasts all over the internet. Um, and there's, you'll see from some of the resources, there's just a lot of great information and great sources that you can um, get your information from. So this next slide is about um, the Bat Week resources packet. On this slide, there is a picture of uh, a bat house uh, with a fun attached to a tree with a fun little uh, bat emblem on it. And it says the Fluttermouse house. I don't know who the Fluttermouse people are. I found this picture off of Unsplash, um, but I just thought it was cool and bat houses are really great. And that's a way that you can help bats in your area um, by providing appropriate habitats to them. Um, but the Bat Week resources packet has a bunch of program and activity ideas. It has, um, social media templates and graphics that you can use. Um, it has coloring pages. Um, it has a list of websites um, and reputable sources that you can go to for that information or to refer your patrons and community to. Um, there's craft ideas. Um, it's just kind of a, 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 a uh, an info dump of stuff related to bats that you can use to help plan programming and activities at your library. Um, <laughs> this resource can be used and accessed by anybody. Um, it's on our website on the Bat Week page, and I will uh, link that in the chat at, um, at the end once I'm done with this PowerPoint. Um, <clears throat> And there's a lot of information there that anyone can use. Um, there is a list of fish, wildlife, and parks um, <laughs> biologists and educators uh, that Montana libraries and organizations can use. Um, I'm, but I'm sure for those of you out of state, there's sort of similar um, FWP positions um, that you can reach out to. And I'm, I'm sure they'd be happy to do education on, on that. Um, so I encourage you to look through this resources packet just to get a, a general brainstorming start on things that you can do, information to learn, deepening your own understanding of bats, and then figuring out how you want to convey that to your patrons. Um, again, it is, it's kind of a long document and it just has a, a bunch of links, a bunch of videos, a bunch of things in there. Um, and I am always looking for more information to put in there. So if you think of anything or you come across a resource that you think would be a great addition, feel free to let me know. This is a living document. It gets updated every year. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to include that. <coughs> Um, the second resource that I want to talk about on this slide is Bat Week Packages. And on this slide, there is a picture of a little brown bat. I think it's a little brown bat um, looking very cute on a, a tree. Um, and you can see how small they are and how, how, how cute they are. Um, but this resource is available to Montana libraries and schools and organizations. And it's free materials to help with program planning. Um, a lot of organizations, I think, use the Bat Week package as um, sort of giveaways or things to use during the activity. Um, and so I wanted to show you the things that we have. 
Um, so we have these I love bats buttons um, that you can request. We also have a good punny sticker. I'm batty about bats um, that you can also request. Um, oh, you can't see this. Oh, lol. Okay. So <laughs> hopefully you can see that. These are um, temporary tattoos of a little cartoon bat. Um, and that is also available for request. And then there's also these fun um, colored pencils. The, it's not an actual colored pencil, it's just a regular pencil, but they come in different colors with bats on them that is also available <coughs> for request. So you can, um, I think you can request up to a certain number of items for each of these things, and then I will package them all up and send them out to you. Um, so I have the bat week form linked here. It is first come first served. Um, oh, one other thing that I'm hoping <laughs> we'll be able to provide are bat week posters of all the bats in Montana and where you can find them. Uh, the state library recently flooded though. And um, so all of our stuff is packed away and we're still in process of locating it. And so I have not yet located the bat posters. So those are still on the bat week package form um, and you should still request posters if you want them, but I will I will let you know later if I can actually fulfill <laughs> those uh, poster requests or not. <laughs> that is still to be determined. Um, so anyway, you're welcome to request all of these things. You're welcome to request um, just one of these things. Um, you can just do a mix and match of them. And it is first come first served. Um, so <coughs> um, I would recommend uh, requesting things sooner rather than later. Um, and Shannon, the link on the slide is not supposed to work. It's, it's, it, it does work if you have the, the um, PowerPoint file and I will upload that to SlideShare later on. Um, but I'm gonna drop all of these links into the chat box once I'm done uh, explaining everything. So sorry for that confusion. Um, I, I will put the links into the, into the chat later on. <coughs> So on this next slide, this is titled Bat Trunks, and we have another picture of a cute little brown bat, and you can see how fuzzy they are. Um, so this is another resource that's available, um, unfortunately, just to Montana libraries and organizations. Um, and this is a, a trunk of activities related to bats um, that you can do with your patrons. Um, so there are four trunks already that are being permanently hosted at four different libraries in Montana. One of them is at the Lewis and Clark Library in Helena. One is at the Billings Public Library. One is at the Haver Hill County Library. And the last one is somewhere that I have forgotten. <laughs> um, I will I will send that in. Um, uh, I, I have I have it listed in um, on the website. And so I will I will send that to you all. So those trunks at those libraries um, are are at those libraries permanently, but you are welcome to reach out to those libraries and see if they would be willing to send you um, the trunk. So it's, it's up to that library's discretion on if they are willing and able to do that. Um, but um, I also have one copy of the trunk here um, and so uh, at the State Library, and so you can also request it to use with your patrons too. Um, we are this this bat trunk will be available for requesting for the whole year. So, uh, as you might imagine, there probably will be a lot of uh, uh, demand during Bat Week. You know, October twenty fourth through the thirty first. But you're welcome to request the trunk at other <coughs> points of the year, and I can send this to you. Um, the way that our trunk program is working in general, this the bat trunk is one of a few trunks that we have. Um, is I will be sending you the trunk directly through FedEx. Um, the shipping is covered by the state library um, and um, then you can have it <laughs> for a set amount of time and then it will be shipped back to me or to the next library or organization that is using it. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the trunks that are available and how that's going to work, there is a webinar later on this month on the 26th where I'll talk more about it. It was originally scheduled on the 10th, but I was. Uh, uh, sleeping <laughs> due to COVID. Um, so it's been rescheduled for the 26th um, and you can find out more information there. 
Um, oh, I see there's a couple of questions. Is it possible to share where you got all your supplies if we wanted to create some trunks ourselves in our locations? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Let me write that down. Um, trunk list. <laughs> um, some of the things were, were free. Uh, I just found them on online. And then other things I did have to purchase. Um, and I, I think uh, it was maybe about... $300, $400 for everything. Um, but I mean, a huge chunk of that. So the, the first activity in here is going on a bat walk. Um, and so this is a bat scanner um, from called the Elecon, the Elecon bat scanner. Um, and it's, it's a really easy thing to use. You can see there's just the power button here. Um, and you can set it to different modes. So you can set it to a certain like decibel um, or a certain Hertz range if you're looking for a specific bat because different bats do calls in different Hertz ranges. Um, or you can just set it to like measure whatever it's hearing. And so in that case, whenever you're walking around and a bat call comes through, it'll register and, and tell you the Hertz on the screen here. Um, and, and you can sense that there are bats about, and you can actually hear the call as well. <laughs> um, so this is a pretty easy, user-friendly, it seems pretty sturdy as well, but this was pretty pricey. I think this is like at least $100, if not more. Um, and in addition to that, there's also this high-powered flashlight um, that has a very, very strong beam of light because when you're walking around and you hear them, you're, you're out at night and you can't see them. So having the flashlight to kind of point in the direction, you'll be able to see the bats flying around. So this was definitely uh, the priciest thing <laughs> in the uh, trunk. Um, so if you don't get this, the other stuff is pretty, um, pretty cheap, but I will, I will put together um, a, a list and um, send that out. <laughs> and if you actually want to stick your, put your email in the chat, that will help me with, with follow-up um, and sending the list of materials to you. Um, so that is this, the bat scanner and the flashlight. This is for, if you want to host a bat walk in your community, um, you know, um, there's, there's lots of bats out and about, uh, and you can probably reach out to FWP and get recommendations on where you might go for, for finding bats. And you can always, you know, try this out on your own first, uh, before you take people there. <laughs> um, so that's the first activity. Uh, the second activity is the great bat migration game. Um, and so let me actually exit out of this and let me share this PowerPoint. So this is um, just a, a, a PowerPoint file um, and it's an obstacle course. So you print out these different things and you put them up in a space and we have these large wooden dice in the trunk. Um, and so you can give groups of people or an individual person or you know a family a couple of dice, dice and then they go through and they try and make it to the end. And so you can see that there's different obstacles or um, uh, helping situations. So it's it's not only fun, but it's also educational and it tells people about, you know, what sorts of things help with bat migration, what sorts of things are, are hindering um, bat environments um, and, and that sort of stuff. There's also kind of fun little missions as you can like smack your mouth 10 times and move ahead five stations. So you can kind of customize this. Um, I think there's 25 slides total. You can of course add more, you can take things out. The only thing with this is just making sure that um, the, the numbers, match up or you know like moving ahead five stations or moving backwards three stations just making sure those numbers um actually can lead you to the end um and doing things that way <laughs> so um this is just available as a, a download from the website um and then you can of course customize things further if you want so that's the second activity uh, let me go back to 
the PowerPoint. Oop, that is the wrong one. <laughs> Let me actually just share my whole screen. Oh, and I don't know where my PowerPoint went. Okay, well, I will just tell you <laughs> the um, next uh, activity, which is, um, well, this is actually, so there's going to be a little binder in here. I'm sorry, you can't actually see this very well. But there is this, um, this I found this from, I think, the Indiana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks place. Um, but it's just a packet of information on bats of the Americas. And it's an online activity guide. And so there's a few um, kind of lesson plans in here for helping kids brainstorm what they know about bats, helping break down misconceptions about bats, um, how to build a bat box or a bat house, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, so there's a variety of, of small little lesson plans in here that you can take a look at. Um, and there's also just great information about bats in general. There is a section in here that's specific on the Indiana bat, um, but a lot of the information in here can be kind of more broadly taught and, 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 and spread. Um, so that's a fun little activity guide in the binder that I encourage you to take a look at. And then something that um, I printed out from the Bat Week website is um, a cookbook of goodies and treats made with bat dependent ingredients. Um, one of the things that bats are super important for is pollination um, and um, making sure that we have access to all the delicious things that we like to eat. And so there are uh, lots of fun activities um, and cooking ideas that you can do um, for all eight. There's a section for all ages for kids. And then there's a section for adults um, because bats are important for the agave plant, uh, which as we all know uh, is where tequila comes from. So, <laughs> Um, this is just a fun little uh, cookbook to look through. There are a couple of things in here that would be fun to, to do and would be easily done in a library, um, like a fruit smoothie or some hot chocolate um, and just talking about pollination more generally. So that's in the binder. Um, there's also, <clears throat> as a fun kind of craft activity, there is, um, I got these from the Bat Conservation International website. Um, so these files are available from them online um, that you can download. Um, and they're just uh, pictures. Oh, geez, you can't see this really. But they're, they're pictures of bat faces that kids can color and then make masks out of. So these are on cardstock. And um, they, are, they have four different bats that you can choose from. Unfortunately, none of these are native to um, the, the North American continent, um, but they are, or there's one from California, um, but it is just fun to learn about all the different bats from around the world um, and um, have a fun little craft activity as well. <laughs> so there's that. Um, there also is, this is just a fun show and tell. This is a little brown bat skull. And I don't know if you can see how tiny this thing is, um, but it comes in this little baggie. And so you can show people just how tiny bats are um, and, and give them an example. And then um, there are two models of bats here. Um, that are actually life size. So this is, I think, the uh, I think this was the hoary hoary bat in Montana, and this is the size of it. Um, and then this is the little brown bat of Montana, and this is the size of it. Um, so even with its wings spread out, it's it's still pretty small. Um, so just to give people a sense of like how big these bats are, which are are <laughs> not very big. And then lastly, um, there's an activity called Bat Blitz. <laughs> um, and this is a really great educational activity for um, 
talking about sort of the life cycle of a bat, how a bat finds food. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can customize this activity. Um, so for this, there's just um, some plastic cups and then these little plastic tokens. You can use anything. You could use Legos, you could use beans, um, just something that um, is like you can pick up and, and easily distribute. And so what you do is um, you, you divide um, the group in, in half and half of them are gonna be bats and half of them are gonna be bugs. Um, and so the bats hold their little uh, bug purse and then the bugs each get <coughs> um, 10 or, or 20 little tokens. And each token represents a certain number of bugs. And so what you do is you assign each bat to a roost um, and you you can use anything you know you can be like you get the table you get the chair or, or whatever but um if you're doing this outside there are these kind of metal hoops that you can put down and then you can assign each bat to a, a hoop um, but you can use whatever <laughs> you want um, and so then you you talk about how bats find food, using echolocation, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you have people, um, you give them, I think three minutes or more time, depending on the age group, um, for the bats to fly around and tag the bugs. And when they tag a bug, the, the bug has to give them a token and that represents a certain number of, of bugs. And so then the bat goes back to their roost and deposits the token there. And so they try and figure out how many tokens, how many bugs they can collect in that amount of time. Um, and then you can brainstorm. So what sorts of things might um, affect this? You know, and that brings you into pesticides or that brings you into white nose syndrome or that brings you into all these sorts of environmental factors that can affect this feeding process. And so then you can alter the feeding um, simulation in that way. So maybe um, you shorten the amount of time that they have uh, for collecting um, food, or you reduce the number of tokens that each bug person has because they've been killed off by pesticides, um, or you uh, reduce the number of bats because of white nose syndrome. There's lots of different ways that you can customize this um, and bring in uh, different educational elements as well. And it's also just fun for the kids to run around and uh, pretend they're bats or bugs. Um, so that's a fun one. <laughs> so those are the things that are in the bat trunk. Um, and you can request the trunk and you can use all of them. You can use just one of them, you know, it's totally up to you. Um, but um, I hope that gives you, I know that was pretty quick, but I hope that gives you a good idea of, of what's actually in the trunk. <clears throat> um, any questions about that? Uh, I see. Oh, I see. These are just emails. Okay. Okay. If there aren't any questions, then I will go ahead and drop some of these links into the chat. So this is the bat week form to request a bat package. Um, and so you can see here, you can request the following amounts of those things um, and, and submit. Um, so let me put that into the chat. Bat week form package request form. Um, additionally, this is the Bat Week website, the um, web page on the MSL website about Bat Week, and so you can see some of the archives from 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 past Bat Weeks. Um, but the Bat Week resources packet is here. Let me open this up. And so you can see the table of contents here. This is just all the stuff that is available to you. Um, I do want to bring particular attention to Montana field guides. Um, and for those of you out of state, there might be something similar in your state. I, I'd recommend 
if you have a natural heritage program of some sort, or maybe fish, wildlife, and parks, they might be able to direct you to the right area. Um, but the Montana Natural Heritage Program is actually at the State Library in Montana. Um, and they have these wonderful, wonderful field guides for all the animals, plants, and nature that's native to Montana. So this link here will take you to the um, general um, the, the general field guide page, um, but you can also look at the specific um, field guides for these um, for these animals. And so you know you can you can link directly from here, but if you've never visited, if you just Google Montana Natural Heritage Program, um, you can go into the field guides here from their page. And what you want is um, you want animals, and then <laughs> you want mammals, and then uh, you want Chiroptera, the bats. And so here, you can see general description, diagnostic characteristics, the range where it's found in the state, um, as well as where it's found all over the United States. Um, you can see where it's been recently observed. There's like, tons of information here that you can look into. Um, so this is just, a, you know, especially if you have someone who's like, I really want to learn more about this specific bat, the Montana Natural Heritage Program field guides are just a great, great, great resource. Um, so I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to that. And also you can see all the different bats that uh, Montana has. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you can see, there's a ton of information here that you can explore, um, and this is available and open to anybody. Um, and I stuck the website link into the um, into the chat. And if you want to learn how to request the bat trunk, um, there's a link here to the trunk program page, and that will give you information on how to request a trunk and and all of that. Um, so I think that is everything related to Bat Week that I have. I can't open my PowerPoint for some reason. So um, you can't see the rest of what was on there, but I think we, we pretty much covered everything. Um, any questions, comments? Um, yeah, else? Amelia, I had a question. Um, yeah. So I went to your request form page. It says up to 15, which is fine. Um, but normally I request for my library and Troy and Eureka as well. Can I make that just one request form or do I need to do three separate ones? Can you do three separate ones? That would be, that would be great. Yeah, um, you can package it all together if that is easier for you. Um, okay. But I will do three then. Okay, awesome, thank you. Any other questions? All right, if not, um, I might go ahead and stop the recording. Um, well, let's see, how do I? Okay. <laughs>